Okay, well, I guess um, we'll come to that much later, hopefully. Well, uh, Frank Obad joins us now. He's the Deputy Force Public Relations Officer, Nigeria Police Force. Morning, and thank you for coming on. I just been thinking about changing it to from uh, police force to police service, by the way. <laughs> I think that that's actually a constitutional issue. Oh, okay. um, but for us, we, we, we are at home. Does I mean, it matter for, to you? If it it doesn't really matter as, 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 as long as um, we, 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 we continue to play the roles you're playing. Uh, it's, it's, if, if you also notice some of the trend in the police today, the trend is for us to just write. In most of our official correspondences, we just simply write the Nigerian police, and then we go ahead. So, uh, but the truth is, the, the Constitution, particularly section, I think, 194, uh, specifically say there shall be a police for this country, and that it shall be called the Nigerian police force. Uh, so so uh, it, we just have to tamper. Until that is uh, yeah, amended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at the report now, and then we'll take it from there. Security in Nigeria has been a major headache, particularly for the northern part of the country, which has been at the receiving end of attacks from the Boko Haram sect. Lagos in the southwest may have largely escaped the spate of terror attacks, but the state has recently been hit by a massive crime wave characterized by kidnappings and armed robbery. Residents may have found the recent upsurge in crime rather staggering considering the visible presence of policemen and patrols all over the state. All the more disturbing is the possibility of Boko Haram surfacing in Lagos following reports that on Tuesday, March the 19th, 25 members of the SEC were arrested in the Jara area following a joint army and SSS operation. However, Armed robbers and kidnappers have been running amok almost unchecked. Now here's a timeline of violent crimes recorded in the last one week alone. On Thursday, March the 21st, a senior manager in a telecoms firm was snatched by waiting gunmen outside his residence while driving out at about 6 a.m. Saturday, March the 23rd, armed robbers attacked houses at Acadia Estate in Lekki. That same morning, gun-toting bandits attempted to grab a woman who was jogging along Admiralty Way in Lekki Phase 1. Later in the evening, unknown gunmen snatched a Briton who had stopped by a traffic light at Victoria Island. On Sunday, March the 24th, armed robbers snatched a Range Rover R3 from a man who had stopped for petrol at a filling station along Awalowa Road, Ikoi. The next day, Monday, March the 25th, two armed robbers were killed in a shootout with the police after attacking some residences. However, residents of Victoria Garden City Estate were not so fortunate after they were attacked by robbers pretending to be guests at a party. The police had been alerted but failed to turn up. Nobody appears to be safe anymore. The law enforcement agencies have instead turned their weapons on one another after two officers of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps lost their lives in a gunfight with a team of policemen on Wednesday. Like other festive periods which usually witness an upsurge in criminal activity, this Easter is experiencing a common phenomenon. It underscores the need for the people to be more vigilant and security conscious while law enforcement agencies also need to increase their security alertness. Charles Aruka for Channels Television News. Well, there you have that uh, uh, report. Well, uh, yes, we did say that uh, Frank Mba is here with us. And having seen that report, you know, uh, people seeing it for the first time, ordinarily, of course, will be somewhat apprehensive. But from your perspective, why is this? I mean, is it not the increase from your perspective, from the records that you have? Crime now. Well, I, I think very respectfully, particularly to uh, something that Charles probably thought he did very diligently. I think the report is rather too simplistic. How do you mean? Uh, before you reach this kind of curious conclusion that there's, there's an upsurge in crime in, in a city like Lagos, you need to first of all take, have a larger picture of Lagos. You need to just look at what, what, what makes 
what, what, what are the factors that make Lagos peculiar? I, I, I'll deal with some of these issues and I'll answer that question very, very quickly. If you look at Lagos, Lagos is a very unique and peculiar state. It is the hub of industrial, commercial, and financial activities in, in Nigeria and perhaps in, 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 in the whole of sub-Saharan Africa. It is also the, the, the heart of consular activities. There's virtually no embassy in Nigeria that doesn't have a, a very strong presence in Nigeria. It holds the largest population of expatriates. It is one country, it is one, one, one city, it, it is littoral. It is accessible by air, by water, by land. It has both international sea borders as well as international land borders. It has a seaport, it has an airport. It has a peculiar migration or a, a, a kind of a, a peculiar immigration style. People always want to troop into Lagos. They hardly ever want to leave Lagos. It is the largest, it has the largest population, not just in Nigeria, but perhaps in Africa. It is one of the fastest growing megacities in the world. If I buy UN, by UN,